On today's Visual Studio Toolbox, part two of my conversation with Scott Hunter. In part one, he gave an overview of what was revealed at Build. And in this part, we have a nice discussion about what it all means for .NET developers. But then there's the question of what do you use to lay out the at design time? Is it XAML or does it wind up being something entirely different, I suppose? Yeah. It, I think it ends up being a couple of things. Uh, well, first off, there are different flavors of XAML. That's a good point you might you mm -hmm. made before. Xamarin Forms is a flavor of XAML, and right. UWP is a different flavor of XAML, and then WPF is yet a different flavor of XAML. There's there's three of them that are, that are slightly different. Yeah. I think for .NET MAUI, we're probably, um, Robert, we're going to use uh, the Xamarin XAML because we want to be compatible with the previous Xamarin apps. I, I wouldn't want to have... .NET MAUI come out, and it'd be very difficult for a, a developer to move, you know, their existing application to, to .NET MAUI, right? right? But we want to do something new as well, and so um, there's a pattern that has kind of gotten popular with some of the web frameworks uh, today. Um, you know, for example, maybe you've seen Flutter, Robert, yep. where you yep. actually define your UI in code. There's Swift UI uh, on the Apple platforms where you uh, define your UI with code. Mm -hmm. And so we we are going to take a, a stab at that as well. And so with .NET MAUI, we're going to give you two choices. One is to go build your UI with XAML like you're used to. Um, the other one's going to be to build your your UI directly with C Sharp. Um, and okay. that yes, yeah, um, that gives you a couple of cool benefits. Um, you know, if if anybody's used XAML. XAML is a really rich, really powerful platform, um, and it's got some complex bindings to it. Um, sometimes those, com those bindings are kind of complicated. If you, want to, if you want to bind a Boolean to your screen, you have to write some code to convert the Boolean into a, a format that XAML understands that, that right. they can display. Um, if you've ever built a Blazor application, it's much simpler. You just put a Boolean there. Um, and writing your UI with um, uh, C Sharp will be very similar to that, where you just Put a boolean there, and, and we'll just deal with it. And so, it's going to give you a simplified binding. Uh, it's going to give you a, a new way of, of writing UI. And we're not going to choose for you. You can choose. You know, if you're a XAML customer, then you continue to use XAML. If you want to try the new C# -sharp kind of syntax, uh, as I said, it's catching on for other 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 platforms, and we want to experiment with it and see uh, if it's good for our customers too. Or maybe, which would be my ideal world, we have actually a designer where you don't have to write any code. Thinking all the way back to the WinForms days when you would use the designer. And sure, you could write code, but who would do that? Now, right. obviously, it's a lot harder. Um, WebForms was very much you dragged a button and you put it down there, and, and that's where it was. Um, XAML is much uh, more adaptable. But given that all the XAML I write is essentially an object with properties, and then hooking up events. Um, I don't know. I'd love. <laughs> I, have, I have this conversation with Dimitri all the time, um, but I would love there to be a designer. Which, sure, maybe it spits out XAML, maybe it spits out C sharp, maybe it could spit out either one, depending on what button I clicked. But that would be my ideal cool world. Yeah, the designers are interesting. We. Uh, um... We struggle with designers, especially when you get to something like uh, Don and Maui, because when you support mm -hmm. all these different devices, um, you know the the designers were great, especially in the WinForms era. In fact, I would say WinForms is unusable without a designer. I, it's you can do simple stuff, yeah. but building a complex UI would be very hard. Um, yeah. the, the challenge we we run into with 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 like the WinForm designer is WinForms is all based on pixels, mm -hmm. uh, which means you basically say it's draw this control at, at pixel point 10, 10 by 10, and then make it 30 pixels wide and, and 20 pixels tall. Um, the the WinForm designer tends to struggle when you get to, oh, here's a 4K laptop or an 8K laptop. Um, because of that pixel perfection, uh, it doesn't scale very well and you, and you struggle with it. And uh, right. we, we hit the same problems with the, with the, with the WebForm designer as well. Um, uh, the WebForm designer basically get, it wrote HTML in the page that absolutely placed a control in the exact same place. 
which means if you resize the browser, the control would just disappear off the screen. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's been a trend as of late away from designers um, and, and, and the trend is kind of, you, you're probably super aware of this, Robert. It's, we, it's, it's, it's got a notion of what we call hot reload or hot restart. Yep. Um, and the idea is, well, what if, if I just change my source code, um, my device reflects that change instantaneously? What if in a, in a web app, I change my HTML, uh, and the web app reacts instantaneously? Is that, is that a better experience or a worse experience? Um, right. And I think we're honestly, this sounds crazy because we're like 18 years into this stuff. I think we're still learning. Um, uh, I think the challenge is nobody's built a good designer for uh, that handles these displays that scale uh, across all these sizes. Um, but that said, um, you know, the .NET Maui effort we're working on uh, is going to be a mix of XAML with the designer. Mm -hmm. um, and it will be a mix of um, C Sharp starting without a designer. Um, but you never know. I don't know if you've ever seen, have you tried, have you ever seen Swift UI, um, Robert? No, I haven't. So they take a, a pretty cool approach. Um, I've not used it a lot, um, but they've kind of melded a designer and Swift into the, the, the uh, uh, developer tool at the same time. Uh, mm -hmm. So as you're moving over some of the source code, uh, you get some pop outs and stuff like that, 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 uh, do some pretty cool stuff. And I think that's an area that we'll explore too, is, is there a way to take that native C-sharp, let, let it sit in a source code file, but as you hover your mouse over the various uh, parts of it, uh, you get some of those designer features. We, we actually did this um, around 2010 for um, ASP.NET Web Forms. Um, you know, we, we found the problem with ASP.NET Web Forms was the designer um, struggle to, to show you what the what the market would look like across the various browsers, you know, Firefox, Chrome, um, now Edge. Um, and so we had an approach where um, instead of actually trying to be in the designer, we brought the designer to the source code. So as I'm moving through my ASPX file, I get the little chevrons around the code that will bring up the designers and the dialogues and stuff like that. Um, but I think this whole space uh, is a space you should, you should just keep following us on Robert and and yep. try the bits as we come out and let us give us feedback. I am I am writing a couple apps that need to run on multiple platforms. I'm writing apps that both my me and my wife will use. Um, it needs to run on my Android, her iOS. We both have surfaces, um, so I'm obviously writing doing the apps in Xamarin, and they look great on Android. They look great on iOS. And out of the box, they don't look as great on Windows. This is not meant as a, a criticism. It's just a bit of a statement of fact. Um, so if I want to write an app just for Windows 10, I could use WPF or I could use UWP and then transition into WinUI. If I'm writing the app for iOS and Android, I can use Xamarin, but I could also use UWP and then use something like Uno to get it into iOS and Android, and that also gives me WebAssembly. So, you know, if I'm doing just iOS and Android, it seems like a pretty clear choice, Xamarin, because that's the first class scenario. But for somebody that also wants to build the app that's going to run on Windows, what's your recommendation as to how to handle that? I think for what you just described, and where we are exactly today, you are, you are correct. I, I think that uh, you know your choice, you really have two choices. One of those choices is you can build a web application. Um, and you know the web app, you can make a, a web app that is, is responsive, meaning that it changes size according to the device you run on. So it would look good on an iOS or Android device. It can look good on the Windows device. Um, but that requires you to know web technology. Right, uh, or requires me to learn it at my advanced stage. It, well, <laughs> advanced age. Um, no, but it, but it is, it is a, I, I would say for you, if you're used to building, you know, native apps for a long time, it, it, right. it is a, a, a learning curve. And, and uh, um, but we want to make sure that we address in, in, in the .NET space, especially, we want to say if you're a web developer, we're going to bring your, help you bring your web developer skills so the app can look good on all the devices. Um, but I think you really nailed it when you said, if you want to run an app that runs on, you know, Windows, and iOS and Android, 
you can do it with Xamarin Forms today, but it maybe it doesn't look as good on the Windows device. I think that's something in .NET MAUI we, we want to address. Mm -hmm. uh, with, with .NET MAUI, we, we want to get you to a point where you can build a pretty dang good looking app that runs on Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. Yep. Um, you know, right now, Xamarin Forms, as you said, has been primarily optimized for the uh, iOS and Android devices. In some ways, the ability to run it on Windows is actually just a, a kind of a historical thing of, of making it where you could run it locally uh, for better interlude performance. Right. Uh, and then, Which as is you said, regardless of whether the app's ever going to ship on Windows, if you're building a Xamarin app, you need to do the Windows app because that's the best way to debug it. Right fastest way to, to, to yeah. build it. But we've, we've not spent a lot of time making that a great experience. And I think that that's, that's one of the goals of .NET MAUI is to make that a, a, a great experience. Okay. Um, and then of course, you know, there's, as you said, if you just want to run it on Windows only, you've got a variety of choices. You have WinForms, you have WPF, uh, which are the things we've historically shipped. Um, and, you know, a lot of de developers, I still find that WinForms is the, I can be most productive in WinForms. Mm -hmm. um, even even though the, the tech for WPF is better, uh, or the or the tech in some cases of UWP is better, man, there's nothing faster than just going and dragging a button and double clicking, and it stays exactly where you want it to, and it uh, it's so so easy. And as you said, the designer is so amazing there. Um, but I do think there is a trend, you know, um, as well. When UI is going to come out, and as it does, I think it will replace UWP. And I I think of UWP slash Win UI as if you want to take advantage of the best hardware on the on the Windows device, that means you want to be, you know, the best touch support. Uh, you want to run on all the monitors. Uh, mm -hmm. You want to run on all the versions of Windows 10 consistently. Um, I think that in the long run will be the the best, you know, best experience. Um, but it hasn't shipped yet. Um, right. And then of course, I loved your your motion your notion of the Uno stuff. Um, you know, Uno's got some stuff where you can bring a lot of the UWP style tech, um, and they can run it using WebAssembly, the same tech that Blazor uses. Yeah. Um, they can run that on uh, iOS, Android devices as well. So uh, um, I, I do think that we are at a point where we have kind of UI soup. Um, and just like I've tried, you know, over the last couple of years to really clean up .NET with .NET Standard uh, and now .NET 5, um, I think it's one of the things that my team wants to work on is, is making these UI stories an easier choice for developers. Yeah, I mean, there's always going to be multiple ways to do things. It will never, unless you really did come up with a designer that was so cool that no one would ever again write code. But <laughs> other than that, there's always going to be multiple ways to do it. Um, it's just, I don't know, I'm, I'm almost to the point where I think I'm going to write the app uh, the beautiful thing is all the the code is is the same, right? All the views, yeah. the models, the view mo the views, the models, the view models, all the helper functions, that code is all written once and can be used everywhere. So that's nice. And then the UWP XAML would look pretty similar to the Xamarin XAML. I've already got the screens all laid out, so it's just a question of duplicating and most of the properties are the same. So, it wouldn't be that hard to redo it in UWP and then start exploring WinUI later on. Um, and then you get the project, then you get Uno, so you get WebAssembly. So you wind up for not a huge amount of work getting everything you want. Um, so I don't know, maybe that, that may sound like the best way to go about it. Um, I was going to say, you know, in the future, uh, WinUI could be the rendering tech underneath um, a .NET MAUI yeah. application. Yep. At which point you're going to get the kind of what you were asking for, uh, Robert. Where basically you write that XAML once, and you get all the power of, of WinUI on the Windows device, and you get a good looking app on the iOS and Android device too. That's um, well, we'll have to go do another one of these in a year and see where we are. Yes. We'll wrap. So one last thing uh, I want to talk ask you about Blazor and WebAssembly. I know. Um, Rocky Latka, for example, has been telling me for five years that WebAssembly is going to be the end of desktop apps. <laughs> <laughs> is that is that is that true? Is it wait? Is it now true? What do we think I don't about think it, that, that? I don't think it's now true. Um, I, 
to me, I think of WebAssembly as something different. I think of it, it could be the end of, uh, it could be the way that all apps are built and run on WebAssembly in the long run. Uh, the cool thing about WebAssembly is uh, it, today it runs inside of the browser and it runs inside of a sandbox, which means it's not allowed to touch the file system or the registry or all the things you don't want to you know, have a, a, an evil app touch. Um, and WebAssembly is supported by a ton of languages, you know, C++, .NET, um, uh, Go, uh, a variety of others. Um, so there's a lot of potential there that imagine you have an operating system that can run WebAssembly. Well, now you can use all these different technologies uh, and the apps run on that, that, that device. Um, there are some limitations in WebAssembly today. If you, if you took your WinForm application or your WPF application and said, I'm going to go make a WebAssembly version of those, uh, WebAssembly doesn't yet support threading. Uh, so if you're doing multiple threads, uh, you're going to have some, some challenges. Um, anytime you, 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 want to, you want to touch uh, some, some resources on the machine, you might run into challenges as well, because as I said, it runs in a sandbox. And so if you want to talk to like the disk, you need to go either through storage APIs, which uh, don't really land in the in the real disk, or you have to go build a a web backend for your application, and you call the web backend and it talks to the file system. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, give us a couple of years and let's see where things are. Um, I think it does have some exciting possibilities of being a, a universal runtime for all apps. Cool. Thanks so much for your time. Thanks for the great overview of what we did at Build. And then I really enjoyed this type of conversation. Um, thanks for doing this. Thanks for having me. Those, these, are, these are good questions and hard questions. And I think uh, you're not the first developer to ask these questions. So, <laughs> be Nor will I be the last, I suspect. No. <laughs> All right. Hope you guys enjoyed that. And we'll see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox. Bye. <laughs>